Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. So welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 22. Deuce, deuce. That was three off. Three off. Yeah. All right, there. Oh, shit. That was that was a great... Another a, curse word. Damn it. That's... Oh, uh, whatever. Does damn it count? I don't think damn it counts. I don't really think shit counts. I think they say that... I, I think damn it, bitch, and shit should just... They say them on TV. Hold on a second. We're F-bombs. Gonna, we're going to find out. Tuesdays. We're going to find out here real quick. Anyway, comic book gimmicks. You're as Brian. In Chromium covers. I am your host, as always, Big B. Brian Adams. And I'm a junior co host of Comic Stream Mixed. Thank you for listening. Let's get his show on the road. While, while uh, before we actually get started, I want to go ahead and uh, I'm making a phone call. Because last, uh, or issue 20, Brian, uh, I guess, was discussing something on Facebook with, uh, with a fan of ours about cursing. And uh, he let a few slip. So I'm calling the person who, I guess, issued the challenge to him. No, I issued the challenge to myself. Oh, then what did he It was a to self-imposed then what challenge. what did he have to do with it? He, he just said that we swore too much. Oh, that's right, that's right. All right, let me see if uh, he'll answer here. And since I am the editor of the Spinner Rack, I do tend to notice when I'm like, well, mother guess, effing this, mother effing that, F, F, F. He's not answering. He'll probably call me back. Like, okay, not to censor myself. This is how it rolls. I'll be like, man, the fucking Batman this week and this bullshit with fucking the Joker is just getting fucking drawn out and it's motherfucking annoying. That is way too many F-bombs for a single sentence. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I was, was in a Kevin Smith movie for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Dicks and fart jokes. for Jane Bob. Dick fart jokes and F-bombs. Yep. That's, that's how, how we roll at Spin the Rack. All right. So issue 22, comic gimmicks. Comic gimmicks, meaning like chromium covers, a lot of the 90s things. Uh, your die cast metal foil, whatever, whatever. Yeah. I die cast. I actually don't think it's ever been die cast. I think I meant die cut. You imagine if you yeah die cut. You imagine you got die cast comic right? and you drop it on your foot. Right, that would suck. You'd break <laughs> some toes. So no, we're really bringing this up in light of uh, a few weeks ago. DC announced that the amount of 3D covers for well, hell, that's that's this month, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, Forever Evil books. The Villains Month, yeah. They're going to be cut back drastically. Oh, yeah. Basically, uh, being that I work here, uh, I've got a little more insight on it. DC went ahead and said um, the pre-orders from retailers for these 3D covers exceeded what their initial order was. Because, you know, with these covers, DC has to put in their printing months in advance. You know, retailers get two months advance to order, but that's just, okay, well, by the time those two months roll around, DC's already got the books in hand. You know, so you figure retailers got to order two months in advance. DC's putting in these orders three, four, five months in advance. So DC went ahead and said that uh, these issues are going to be heavily allocated because they, you know, set a print run of X amount, excuse me, X amount, and the retailer response was completely what they didn't expect, and it was just the numbers were astronomical. So, you know, if you if you're lucky. You ordered a hundred copies or something. You'll be lucky if you get half of that. Well, I've heard it's even the allocation would push down to like twenty percent of orders. Some, some, places. some. Um, and then it's like, okay, so there are a couple questions with this. How does DC decide, or is it and not just DC but Diamond because Diamond's the one that distributes the books? How do they decide who gets what allocated? Like, okay, you're a smaller shop than let's say a chain, right? Okay. Okay, let's say, let's use a, a store that most people know, Midtown Comics in New York. Okay, compared to Bob's Comics and Crap in fucking Iowa. All right? Now, let's say Bob only orders 10 copies, whereas Midtown orders 300 copies, you know? Is Bob going to get just 10 measly copies, or are they going to allocate his stuff because Midtown is a bigger store and they don't want to short Midtown, so they're going to give Midtown as many, as close to that 300 as possible. Like, how, how is that even decided? Like, so is DC and Diamond going to play favoritism? Right, right. That's a damn good question, man. I really feel like that this is a huge, huge mistake by DC, man. It is. It like, really how is. could you not be... Okay, first of all, you planned an event in a month. 
that's going over, to be... How long ago has this been yeah, planned? Fre- yeah, when, when with Free Comic Book Day was the first mention of Trinity War. Yeah. Which, so obviously if they knew, spoiler alert, if they knew Trinity War was going to directly lead into Forever Evil, mm-hmm. which is the new mini, or new the event... We'll just call it Villains Month. Well, Forever Evil is going to be the event. Right. It's going to be Villains Month because all the books are being replaced by Villains, but then there will be Forever Evil, which yeah. all those books tie into. So if they knew this was coming, why not prepare better? Is this not like a slap in the face to fans? Not and just fans, but the retailers who yeah, every week... They're bread and butter. Putting, yeah, exactly. The people that really make them their money. Yeah. Because you know they ain't making the money digitally. No, of course not. And now it's like, you know, like I said, working here, you, uh, you look at it as, okay... Like us, for example. Now, I don't use names because some people don't know the name of shop. I don't want to put the shop on blast. So, But an example is, okay, we're going to get allocated a certain amount of books. We have our normal subscribers who are waiting, who are expecting, okay, I subscribe to it. Why am I not getting it? It's your job as my retailer to get it. Why am I going to continue to buy from you if you can't deliver? Even though it's out of our hands. Right. You know what I mean? How does that look? And then we lose customers. We lose customers. We stop ordering from Diamond. Then that's it's it's a giant chain. So it's like okay. So basically, that's a direct line of DC slapping the fan, but the retailers are getting the brunt of it. It's it's gonna everything is gonna come down to us. You can sit there and be like DC didn't do it right. You can tell that to the fan, and the fans gonna be like, well, I don't give a shit about what DC does. I subscribe to you guys. You guys can't get the issue from me. So now, the, with the numbers being allocated, we can't pull these three D covers for anybody. We haven't decided what we're going to do with them. We haven't decided if we're going to put them on the rack and be like, first come, first serve. We're not playing favorites. you know. We're going to throw them on the wall automatically. Because now, the collector market, all of a sudden, think about it. These issues are allocated. They're going to be a lot scarcer. There's going to be shops. I don't know. you know, I don't know. But there's going to be shops that sit there, and as soon as it comes in, it won't even make it to the rack. They're right. going to bag and board it, put a price tag on it, slap an extra 10 bucks, right. and yeah, throw $15 it up. $15 on the wall. You know? And it's going to suck. But the regular 2D cover, just the basic cover, those are the ones. So let's say you ordered 100 copies of Batman, and you're only going to get 35 of them. The majority of what's left is going to be filled with the regular cover. And who's going to really want to buy that? I mean, I know your readers will want to buy it. Yeah. But people that are expecting to get those. And another issue that arises from them doing that is that DC, I believe, has also press released and said that they will be filling the orders for the, the rest of the 3D covers, mm-hmm. but not till later. I, I think almost a month next later. Year. Oh, it's a month later? I thought it was a couple months. No, it's, a, it's a closer to the holidays. But by then, who's going to care? Yeah, by then, who cares? Your event's over, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You'll have all... They'll come out, and it'll make the people who are selling it for a premium, they'll, they'll have to sell it regular because they won't be able to move it at those premium prices mm-hmm. anymore because it'll be so available. And then, like you said, people will have read it already. Who's going to give a shit? And then how is that going to cut into the 2D market of the world's regular books that they put out? How many people aren't going to bother to buy that at all because they're just going to wait? Yeah. Because really... Well, the 2D books come out at the same time. Well, I know, but I'm saying how many collectors that want the 3D and don't get the 3D oh. are just going to be like, well, bump this. Yeah. I'm going to wait for a month or two to when they actually put out the 3D covers and then I can get that. Or like the way they do it now... Well, I'm just going to wait because they're going to put all these one-shots in a trade, and I'll just buy the trade. <laughs> and in DC, we're like, we're going to make 3D covers for the trades. Right. And they don't. Jesus. I'm waiting to see if they're how they're doing it. Uh, the Death of the Family storyline from DC is collected in a hardcover. The hardcover itself has the die-cut Joker face. Oh, yeah? With a new underface, and it's supposed to be Joker's face without the skin. Nice. Yeah. I actually ordered that, and I don't order hardcovers. Excuse me. Yeah, see, I'm all about the hardcovers. So. I didn't like that storyline enough to buy a hardcover, though. I thought it'd be cool. I mean. I, I'm going to give it a second read. It was a great story. The build, the ending sucked. The ending week, does suck. That's, that's what worries me about. Weak sauce, man. I know I'm getting off subject here, but that's what worries me about year zero, is that you're going to get this really good story, because so far, it hasn't been bad. I haven't read the latest one. It's been okay. It hasn't been Whatever. great. But is it going to build up to awesomeness, and then we're going to get to the end, and it's just going to fall flat on its face? Probably. Which is how I felt Court of Owls and Death of the Family did. But anyway, I mean, how many how many comic book stores do you think will get affected by that, like I said, the, by All people that are going to wait All and just buy it till the three covers are available? Every store will be affected. I guarantee you, Midtown, uh, maybe Graham Crackers, uh, what's the other one? The big uh, 
Lone Star Comics out in Texas. Uh, I, what the hell is the one in California? The real Mile High, or excuse me, not California, Denver. These these shops will come out and say, yeah, we were hurt by it. we were, you know, they allocated us as well, which I'm sure they will, but probably nowhere near as much as like I said, Bob's Comics and Crap right, in right. Iowa. So it's like okay, so it's like okay, they're gonna come out just for the sake of it and be like, we got allocated too. Our business got hit. No, it didn't. Yeah, not to the severity of the small stores. No. Exactly. You know, and it's just like, how does DC answer that? Sorry. You'll be sorry when all these small stores start <laughs> losing business. No, I, I know I, we've said it's going to be a slap in the face of the retailers. It's also a slap in the face of the fans. How many fans are, is DC possibly going to have just walk on them from this? Because I know there's a lot of fanboy rage still over the New 52. Mm-hmm. Like, I know when the New 52 started, I don't think you were working here yet. Or I, I don't started think you were at my store at the time. I started working here when uh, the third issue started. So like I was saying, the slap in the face of the New 52, I know me personally, when they, when I first read about the New 52, I was kind of pissed off by it, and I heavily considered, like, this is my time to break. Mm-hmm. And as it got closer, and they put out that spotlight book on the New 52, mm-hmm. there was a lot of books I wanted to read. And it ended up being that instead of walking away, which at the time I think I was collecting 10 to maybe 12 to 15 comics a month, okay. all DC wasn't doing any Marvel now. Well, Marvel hadn't done Marvel now yet. I was completely out of Marvel. It was just DC and a few independents. And then once New 52 hit, I went up to like 30-something. So I read half of the comics they put out in New 52. And I have to say, I'm very pissed off with DC because they have canceled a lot of good books that they didn't put any effort behind trying to Same. promote. Uh, JLI was a great book. Oh, definitely. Um, I know you don't agree with that. I'm OMAC, I liked OMAC. A Frankenstein was a great book. It should have been saved. Yeah, I just didn't read OMAC. You didn't read OMAC? There's just something that didn't catch my attention. Did you do any Frankenstein? Later. I, I liked Frankenstein, right away. man. Um, it was one, Frankenstein was one of those books that when I read it, I was just like, oh, I didn't read it. I looked at it, I was like, really? Frankenstein? This is fucking stupid. <laughs> And I didn't bother with it, but I heard good shit about it, and I'm like, wow, there's so many people subscribing to this. So when it came out in trade, I sat and I read it in one reading, I was like, wow, this was good. So, never judge a book by its cover. Yeah, case. never. Captain Adam. Eh. Really didn't like Dude, I thought that was one of the best interpretations of Captain Adam ever, and the reason they canceled the book, and if I ever, if I, I don't even know because the DC the executive's book. name. But I'd like to punch him in the mouth. Bob Wayne. For the dumbass. Was it Bob Wayne? That was the most ignorant statement I've ever read. Why do you want to read Captain Adam when you have the real thing in Dr. Manhattan? Wow, you work for DC and you're so dense that you don't even know that Dr. Manhattan is based off of Captain Adam? Now, speaking of Bob Wayne, i got to throw this in there. As an example, to, to show you how DC is handling these retailers and the 3D shit. The owner of said establishment I guess called DC asking why are you guys allocating you guys are fucking me over basically I was here last week phone rings I answer what's the guy I think the guy's name was Vince from DC Comics and I'm calling on behalf of DC Comics can I speak to you know so and so and I says uh, they're not here you know can I take a message he says yes this is Vince from DC Comics I'm calling in regards to the message that was left about the 3D cover allocations for your store. And uh, they originally asked and requested to speak to Bob Wayne. Bob, unfortunately, right now is out sick. So I'm handling all his calls. How convenient is it that this guy is out sick? Talk about passing the buck. You know? It's like, oh, I can't deal with this. I'm going to go on vacation. You take care of it. Like, ah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I know... I know me personally, I have told a bunch of people that this would be a prime month to save your money. Now, if you want to read Forever Evil, that's fine, because really, how heavily are 150 fucking comic books going to tie into a seven-issue miniseries? Yeah. Not that heavily. I really feel like it's more the New 52's opportunity to be like, oh, we're going to establish origins on 150 villains right now. Even though I know that's going a little... I'm probably going a little heavy on the 150. Yeah. But it's definitely... It's definitely going to be over 100. 
because I mean, you know, some books are only getting like one. Like Green Arrow, I think it's only getting one. Oh, I forgot to mention when I was bitching about canceling books, Demon Knights. You fucking suck, DC. Whoever's decision it was to cancel Demon Knights, that was just an, an epic fail. Epic fail. I that, I think, reading, was one of like, the premier books that they put out. I remember reading that towards the beginning of the issues, you know, towards the beginning of its run. And I'm like, wow, they're killing kids in this book. It's some some stuff in there made me cringe. I was like, that's a good book. If it's making me cringe, I'm like, holy shit. They got something. Like, they made me give a shit about characters I thought I would never give a shit about. Like, Vandal Savage, never been a fan of Savage. Now, I still kind of think Vandal Savage is a prick, but I like the character. I've always been a huge Etrigan fan. Mm -hmm. I liked seeing him take center stage. Uh, the Horsewoman, I, I don't even know if she was, was she a new character or was she old school? I don't know. I know Sir Yiston was the Shining Knight. Yeah. I liked how they played with the sexuality of the Shining Knight. You know what I thought was actually funny? Uh, did you read Stormwatch at all? No, but I know that you said that it, that Stormwatch, that they revealed that Stormwatch is the evolution of Demon Knights. Mm -hmm. The thing that got me was, um, it's a play on words. Demon Knights and the aliens. Hellspawn? Uh-huh. They were considered the demonites. All one word. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. In, in the... Uh, in Spawn and in, in Wild Earth, Earth, and in yeah. Blue, yeah. They were the demonites. And then these were demon knights. Because I remember reading an issue specifically. I don't remember what book it was, but... Where they were like, um, oh, the demonites. He's like, the demon knights? And he's like, no, 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 demon knights. And they corrected him. But the reason I bring up Stormwatch is an example of DC Clusterfuck. The Stormwatch, I think, up to issue 18 was pretty fucking good. It was, it was it was pretty good. It was interesting. It, was, it had its moments. Issue 19 was the one where they all came out with the gatefold covers. And for some reason, they decided to bring the old Stormwatch logo back, and they replaced the team with the actual Authority version. Right, The right. watered-down DC one. Right. And it sucked. Jim Starlin is not writing it. Yeah. And I read your review of the issue when Starlin took over. I'm like, what? So I stopped reading it. I read the first four issues of Stormwatch, and Stormwatch really for me became a casualty of I have over I have overextended my financial capabilities and something's gotta go. Superboy, Teen Titans, Stormwatch. Like Teen Titans I think I bought the first two issues, same thing with Superboy, and then I was just out. Stormwatch I think I made it to five and then I was out. And the only reason I really was on Stormwatch is because of my, my I, I like Martian Manhunter. And he wasn't anywhere. Another problem with DC's books were some of them took the time to start developing the character before they delved into like this huge action sequence, where some of them just came right off the bat with just fighting, 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 and you didn't really have time to develop that character. You know, you're like, okay, just throw him in a situation right away. What happened with taking the time to build your character up and build the story? So when something does happen, the reader's just like, oh. You know, they're emotionally invested in it, whereas in the first issue, oh, look, Hawkman has a mace that he just swung at this guy's face for some reason. Why? Give me a little bit of background. Yeah, you know, these characters' origins, you can go on online now and read an origin and read all yeah, about totally. it. Yeah, totally. You have to remember the golden rule. Every comic is somebody's first. You might have somebody come in here who's like, I've never read a comic a day in my life. You know, yeah, they could cheat and go online, but they'd rather, get, they'd rather read the comic and know the character. As opposed to going to Wikipedia or something, you know? They come in, they look for a comic. How are they supposed to start? That's one thing I credit Marvel over DC. The Marvel has those recap pages, whereas DC's, and I quote, not word for word, but they said they don't believe in recap pages because if their readers aren't smart enough to remember what just they what they just read previously in the yeah, last month's book. that's a dick book, thing to say. Like, come on, really? You expect the reader, okay, you're not going to put a recap page because you're, re you're saying your reader's smart enough to remember what happened. Cool, get it. How do you know that's the only book the reader's reading? When I was reading full-time, dude, I was reading over 100 titles a month. Yeah, that's sick. I couldn't fucking remember half the shit I just read. I know, that's that's the problem with me, too, is I, at this point, maybe read, like, 30 or 40 titles a month, mm -hmm. and sometimes I forget what happened last year. I read, issue. like, three. Yeah, you're, you're really <laughs> down to nothing now. I just fell behind. Shameless plug that you mentioned Marvel. IDW, baby. I just read Nova today, issue seven, and, dude... First page, complete background on what Anova's all been. Yeah, I, well, I saw that you reviewed it. And um, uh, I, man, never thought I liked Nova. That's a whole book. See, my problem with some of the stuff, like I tried to crack, like right now, I think what we mentioned earlier, Cable and X Force. Uh huh. 
And the last issue I read was number eight, where the one where Cable's like in the spacesuit on the right. cover. I read that. I'm like, all right, where's number nine? And I grabbed it. Then we don't have number ten in stock, so I was like, crap, I can't read it. So that's why I tend to fall behind on some of these books because that one issue is mi- missing. Right. And then I'm not gonna, like, the yeah. only time I made this exception was last week. Um, I wanted to read Superior Spider-Man sixteen. Nice. I knew you were gonna say Superior. Spider-Man. I couldn't. I, I forgot to read fifteen. So I was like. Uh, and I read the re- half an issue, and man. I read the recap page, and then I was like, "All right." And then I read, you know, at the end, Hobgoblin becomes the Goblin Knight or whatever. I was like, "Oh right. yeah, thanks, thanks, dude. You're dick. You read it? No. <laughs> Seriously? No, I didn't read it yet. Oh shit! I thought you read it. I'm sorry. Like I said, I read like 30, 40 books a month, mm-hmm. and since I have to write reviews on them, plus having an eight month old, I tend to write review the shit that I really like last. Okay. Like the books I really like, I usually read last. This week I kind of just went in alphabetical order. Okay. And Superior I haven't gotten to yet. See, like, but man, go ahead. Fifteen was awesome. Yeah. When he goes goes in and takes down Shadowland, and he's got like spider. Well, I read that. Did you? Yeah. You're thinking fourteen. Am I thinking fourteen? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm yeah, I read that one. I read that one. Oh man, that was a great. Fifteen issue. is the one where he's fighting Hobgoblin on the cover, and he looks like he's got these big spider legs coming out of his back. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't read that one with the with the sword. The sword piercing Hobgoblin is sixteen. Yeah. That's the one I read. Okay, I haven't read that one. Before that, I didn't read. Okay, you're so, yeah, right. You're right. That was like the, the fall for yeah. The dude was awesome. That costume's awesome, man. Uh, Superior Spider-Man, bitches, it's great. But anyway, that's, that's that's why I tend to be behind because I read them when I'm here in the shop. Right. If you're sold out of something, I'm not going to fucking continue reading. It's like, oh, I'll move on to something else. So just just to because we're coming to the end here, just to wrap things up. In the age of gimmicks, starting with the 90s, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I almost think we need to retell this episode now. It needs to be issue 22, DC's 3D cover debacle. Now, I don't know if debacle's a really good word, though. What should I use there? 3D's, 3D, the 3D cover F up? <laughs> DC's F up? Yeah. But uh, it was a mistake, man. It's a mistake. DC's F you. Right? <laughs> Anyways, DC's new FU. Yeah. Hey, you know, <sighs> like I said, as a collector, dude, bowing out this month. I don't care about 3D covers and shit. That kind of gimmicky stuff never really did anything for me. Mm-hmm. If it was like, uh, like if I bought a comic, like like the die cut covers for Batman during fam- Death of Family, that wasn't anything extra. Right. It's just something they threw on there. Right. I picked that up because I, it was just my normal book. I wouldn't have went. If that was like a special edition, was a dollar more, it wouldn't have bought. Right. Well, see, I, I was, I hunted at like Toys R Us for the newsstand versions. Yeah. Because the newsstand versions were the, the die cut cover, but without the die cut, like the Joker face was not on the cover. It was just the under. <coughs> right. Right. Same thing with the issue nineteen, the gay fold covers. Yeah. They weren't quote, they weren't gay fold covers. They were just a single image. So some stuff I'll go. Like if it's a foil cover, or like uh, Sonic Universe uh, mm-hmm. number fifty, it's got um, it's got Metal Sonic on the cover, and he's like this. It's a Sonic Universe in red foil, and he's got red foil on his eyes. The newsstand version has no foil. I scooped that shit up. Yeah, see that just doesn't do anything for you, man. It's a, you know I'm I'm one of those I have to have every cover. Yeah, it's it's a collector thing. I get it. Yeah, totally. So bottom line is this a slap in the face to. The, the stores and the fans. Definitely. DC dropped the ball on this big time. Absolutely. And, you know, Marvel's sitting back laughing like, keep it up. Keep it up. Hopefully Lou understands the hate this time around. <laughs> if you don't understand people getting fucked out of 3D covers, Lou, I, I just don't I'm sure you do. It's, you know, it's DC. They dropped the ball on this. They, totally. Big time. You know, granted... Yes, you have to print the covers out so far in advance. You never know. You don't want to print 30,000 and you only sell 10,000. What do you do with this extra 20? But your DC comics. Donate them, offer them at a discount, something. Tax write off. Ship from your overseas market. Something, you know. (laughs) But yeah, DC totally ruined it on this. You know, I'd like to see how they're going to make it up. I really would. Yeah, we'll see. If they make it up. I don't know. They probably won't. In this day and age, you don't really see a lot of making things up when these. From big corporations, like, oh, my bad, no. sorry. So for the spinner rack they, issue, they could drop some of the three ninety nine books down to two ninety nine. They could, like what, some of them went back up. What happened to drawing the line at two ninety nine? Well, when Detective came out, it was two ninety nine. Batman was two ninety nine. Action, Action was, was always three ninety nine. Was it? Yeah. What about JLA or Justice I, League? I mean, Justice League was three ninety nine. 
Action was three ninety nine, and it was one more that they had that was three ninety nine. Um, one other book that was three ninety nine. Everything else was two ninety nine. Everything. Now, Detective is three ninety nine. Batman is three ninety nine. Justice League is three ninety nine. Justice League of America is three ninety nine. But you know, Justice League Darkest I think three ninety nine. The um, Trinity War one is. Yeah, that's come on, dicks. Whatever. Of course, you know, I guess that's Marvel's, you know. And in a Marvel comic out now, it's not three ninety nine. Yeah, there's a few. Well, Fantastic Four. And well, see, Marvel's out. Marvel's reasoning for it though is the digital thing. Yeah, they're making their money. Oh yeah, absolutely. I would. You know, hey, I, I don't have a problem paying an extra bucks if I'm getting a free digital copy. Well, it's not free because you're paying for it. Well, the ones that are two ninety nine have no digital copy, and they you, they got caught up because their slogan on the thing it used to say includes free digital copy. And you're like, okay, you're charging three ninety nine, but it comes with a free digital copy. The ones that are two ninety nine don't come with a digital copy at all. Right. Like, so, wait a minute. So, so apparently you're charging for that. Yeah, and copy. then they got caught up on that. So they changed it. Now it just says bonus digital copy included. Because they can't say it's free when you're still paying for it. <laughs> Slouches. Well, Spirit Rack 22. Deuce, deuce. DC's F up. Royally. Will they recover? Won't they recover? Only the future can tell, as always. Recover my balls. I'm Big B. Brian Adams joined. Junior co host of Comics Remix. And as always, check us out at www.comicsremix.com, the hub for everything Comics Remix, mm-hmm. where you can find reviews, blogs, the Comics Remix show, and a link to Spinner Rack. For the show, any uh, any topics you'd like to hear us discuss on the show, please email us at comicsremix at gmail.com. Well, you just said that, didn't you? Nope. Okay. And at, uh, or at the Spinner Rack at ymail.com. Somebody email Brian, please. He's not once received the email there. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I know. I haven't <laughs> received the email at all. You see the look on his face. I just but got you know told what? that I was negative. You uh, you don't receive emails, but damn it, if you don't get some good fans jumping on uh, these conversations on Facebook, you know, you, you and David both, man, you guys have been laying it down lately. <laughs> hey, you got it, man. You got it. You to. know, a fan says something, you might hear a comment here and there, but no, you and David just be like, "Look, dude, let me lay it down," and you just, you, know, you guys are on it. I like that shit. It's good stuff. It is. So we'll see you guys next week, issue twenty three, where we discuss. Well, you just got to tune in and find out, don't you? Later, guys. Bum, bum, bum.